for the Agile community. www.agile.fm Welcome to another episode of Agile FM. Today I have Willem van den Korput with me. Uh, I hope I pronounced that uh, correctly out of the Netherlands. Um, Willem is the VP of Engineering for a very interesting company I want to talk about today. That is Lightyear. And if you're interested in that company, that is uh, the domain name is Lightyear.one. Um, so that's how you can see the amazing products uh, Willem's company is producing. Those I want to touch on. But before we get started, welcome to the podcast, Willem. Thank you, Joe. Well, really good, uh, really nice having me in, in here. And it is pronounced really well, Willem van der Kopper. It's really a Dutch name, but uh, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, awesome. Great. We want to talk a little bit about electric vehicles today. Um, I'm a big fan of electric vehicles, uh, but the one from Lightyear is a very special one because it is a solar powered, is that the right word for that? Solar powered electric vehicle or uh, fed vehicle. Um, so that's a very interesting one. And you guys are about to uh, release products um, into, into the market. So there is it's beyond a concept at this point. And that's why I'm so thrilled to talk about the product a little bit, but also about Agile as you're running your VP, uh, as a VP, you're running your engineering organization. So uh, I'm interested in both. Correct. Yes, indeed, it's a solar powered electrical vehicle. So we call it SEV. And it is indeed built with solar panels on the roof and the hood and on the tailgate. Uh, but solar is not the only, only key of it is it's the total concept of the solar EV because it, just putting a solar panel on a regular EV doesn't make it really efficient. So we make it really efficient, aerodynamic, solar powered electric vehicle. Yeah. You can still charge it by, by, by a connector, but if you put it in the sun, you will at least gain your daily commute uh, in your battery. So you could, yeah. You could be, yeah. yeah. And that's what we like to come from as a, as, as, as we talked before, I think we, we are originating from the solar challenges in, in Australia, the races, and our founders are actually in the Netherlands coming from the University in Eindhoven, mm -hmm. and in 2013 won the world championship first time on the cruiser class, and, mm -hmm. and really showed that, we can, that you can bring a lot of people to, uh, to the finish in 3,000 kilometers. That is unbelievable. I want to go a little bit deeper on that race um, as well with you. But um, I had a, a, a few episodes ago, I had a, a person you guys uh, also connected with through uh, uh, electric vehicle, agile development practices, Joe Justice. He's experimenting um, a lot with uh, electric vehicles. He owns, uh, he owned a company, Wikispeed, um, all of those things. So um, just to, not, to make this only about one particular company, but a very interesting one. But what's interesting is, is there's so much innovation um in that space right where electric vehicles in general the charging the speed um as well but there is um something uh, joe just has always uh, said in in that podcast and in user group events is like that experimentation really um you know gets you like through failing fast um in these kind of uh, approaches while right? failing possibly often um, and getting to your goal faster. Um, and that, that's why he was so, so interested in the Agile Cutter. We have talked about that as well. But what I want to talk about is, and this was so eye-opening when I saw your uh, presentation in Agile Amsterdam. And I said, I have to have you on that show because you think about, well, you're charging your car on a, on a solar powered or a solar EV, SEV, as you, as you said. Um, that is one aspect of it. The charging times are going lower so you could say so what's the point right but the interesting point that really uh um was so so uh was my main takeaway was is that the grid yeah the electric grid is getting a break by solar power right so if everybody is charging and if the amount of electric vehicles is uh, going up around the globe um how does the grid actually support that and I think that was like the breakthrough moment for me. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Why, why that is so important and how you guys incorporated that? So, so, so the importance of, of electric vehicles in this transition in, the, in, the, in global warming in that sense, it comes to the point that a lot of EVs have been pushed to the market um, and you already have a, a waiting list on, on the charger poles because that's not enough or they are breaking down or they don't work or uh, anything else. 
if you look into our concept, we, we are efficient, so we can charge once time faster than usually because we, we only use half of the energy. So that makes, makes a big, big thing out of it. And in that sense, in the summertime, and definitely if you would bring our car, and that would be our future goal to, to the US, eh, to California, Florida, where the sun shines uh, all, uh, during the day, you can, you can just recharge your battery over day. So it's 70, 80 kilometers in a, in a day's charge. Mm -hmm. I think it's 50 miles in, in a day, if yeah. you would talk that one. Uh, and you don't need to go to a charging pole in order to come home. So efficiency is the key of our, of our product in order to, uh, to bring it there. And in order to do this, we, we have to adopt Agile. And we are actually, we are not adapt adopting Agile, we're already Agile, what they said. Eh? So from the start on, what we started with working with crates of beers and, and duct tape in order to build a car, uh, uh, we use uh, some, some tools to have a steering wheel in the hand and making sure that we would, would see how it would look like this car. Yeah. how big it was and how many people we could put in there. And with a group of, when I joined them five years ago in 2018, uh, we were 30 boys and girls in that sense in a small room and playing around, uh, making sure that we could make a car in a, in, in a few years' time. Mm -hmm. And actually, currently, we, we've grown to that point by, by doing, a, doing constantly iterations and constantly testing mm -hmm. to make sure that we have an efficient car. And actually, we, we managed it because we, in, I think, last month, so that's in uh, like September 2022, we, we launched uh, the most efficient uh, aerodynamic car, production car in the world. Wow. Uh, okay. That is one of the key things. So yeah. aero and aerodynamics in a car is, uh, is half of your energy consumption. So this, the, fa the, f the faster you drive, the, 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 the bigger drain you will have on your battery. Right. And as for us only, the only way is to, 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 to trial fast, test fast, learn fast. Yeah. And actually, that's just a mindset. on the, And we, we didn't use the, an Agile manifesto in the beginning. We just started on this one uh, from day one. Yeah, it's just like a, a typical startup. You you mentioned those races initially. I think they were in Australia, right? It's the big, the big uh, uh, long-distance race uh, for solar um, cars. Yeah. It has won, I think, three or four times or something like that, yeah. and if I remember correctly. Um, how important were those for you guys uh, in, the, in the production, but also in, in, in terms of the culture for the, for the organization? The, the, the culture started from that because there were small teams and the, the, the team members uh, from the first three races at least, and the fourth race is also it was actually more or less can, canceled due to COVID uh, reasoning in 2021. Uh, so they build a, a camper van, but still all members, team members of the students in that time, uh, many of them are, have joined Lightyear. So many of them have been in the student teams where they have to set up their own business, they have to set up their own programs, work agile to within two years, create a new car, mm -hmm. according to the specs of the, uh, the organization. So uh, it's, the, it's the Bridgestone Solar the races in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Australia. Mm -hmm. Where they drive from Adelaide to so from yeah from Adelaide to, to Darwin, so it's three thousand kilometers. But it's the mindset to test fast in order to come to a most efficient car. But on the other sense, also think um, think system engineering, meaning that you would think the total system, and that's also uh, in in the agile mindset. Think from the beginning to the end. What what is your what is your goal? Where do you want to go? Um, and that mindset helped us building our culture. Yeah. In the, from the start on was to start agile without being, without thinking agile at first. Yeah. But it's also got to be like a, the, the, the celebrations, right? It must feed into the culture. You're winning this race. You're like, this, this must be a great moment for the, for the culture. Uh, huge. Success. Yeah, it's huge, right? And we still celebrate small things huh? from the beginning onwards. Uh, every Friday, we have a Friday afternoon drinks in order to celebrate the week. And we kick off the week with a, with a Monday morning kickoff. And we yeah. still do this. Even wow. now, we've grown as a, it's not a startup anymore. We've grown to 600 people plus as a, a big scale up. Mm -hmm. We still do the Monday morning kickoff with the CEO and, uh, and all, uh, all, all the teams to, to share at least. It's, it's more information sharing, but still it's like, a stand-up meeting, but half an hour, just some small updates on culture, on uh, 
sometimes finances, sometimes on the projects, in order to to keep everybody up to date in the mm-hmm. in the process. Yeah. Yeah, what's what's also interesting about this this story is right. So you, you you had these cars on the road, you were winning races, but it's now time to transition into like road ready cars that are being produced. I think the first batch, um, I think for the majority of people, I'm sorry to say, it's probably financially out of reach, uh, but it's to make a point, right? So you can get these cars on the road uh, for you know a high price tag, but the car is. I mean, it's obviously a, um, a, a great, a great looking car, and I can't wait to yeah. see this car in in action, right? But there is a second uh, car coming that is a little bit more mass produced, and uh, obviously uh, more interested for other segments. Um, so, how do you guys prepare for such a big transition, like going from a road race, one single car winning this race? I would, I would assume it was one car, right, that participates in that race, and one. one. To like a small batch of cars, I don't know, like um, how many how many cars are you guys producing in batch one? Um, yeah, so 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 we we actually three years ago, 2019, we made one prototype first. Uh, two a year later, we made another one. So mm-hmm. the first one was aesthetical. The second one was already a proof of concept. Uh, we brought in there the, the investors. We brought customers and start showing them as well what we made because we we shared that story constantly. Also, we celebrated with them. Uh, last year, so 2021 till till today, 20, mid 2022, we produced around about 10 prototype vehicles, where we also started working on. So gradually building the organization by making from one step to another to, mm-hmm. to make it bigger, because the end goal is start of production, as we have by the end of 2022, um, that the first customer car would roll off the production line uh, with our partner. That we, yeah, that we that we select because also we we de- we focus on development first make sure that we have an efficient car that the product is perfect and that the product really works well for the customer mm-hmm. production and producing it itself is is for us also the next step so we outsource that for now yeah um because there we have people that really can build something really nice as a manufacturing so we first focused on the product so it's a statement product it's indeed not affordable for for for, for all of us mm-hmm. um, but that's also part of the plan going forward that we we got our, our mission in that sense is clean mobility everywhere mm-hmm. so that we can gain with the lucky one we can drive any, everywhere so we can also go drive to south africa from europe and halfway charged by the sun and wait for a day and you can you can continue uh, and the next step is ch- clean mobility everywhere is every for everyone and the second bit of that one that we created a Lightyear 2, when we were working on it, that would be affordable uh, for for everybody. Yeah. Uh, in order to bring it to the to the world, Europe first, then to the US in three, four years from now. Yeah. So it's it's very interesting, right? So for somebody who might be listening to this podcast and I say I'm not in the, the car and automotive industry, right? Um, but the, the interesting piece is you can filter out from here is right. You, you guys have a mission. You guys have really big goals uh, for your uh, for your company, good ones, sustainability, things that are needed. Um, but on the other side, you're also breaking it down into achievements, right? It's like, where are we prototypes that like what the company and the workforce at that time can actually um, achieve and, um, and these stepping stones. It's, it's very interesting to see. And then obviously your uh, mission to um, take everything to the um, to the mass market, right, and that everybody can enjoy uh, driving a solar uh, EV. That is um, from an from an agile perspective, right? Something you can take away for any kind of product development. It doesn't have to be uh, a car that you would produce. And I hope that people see that link. When we're talking yeah. about that, this is not really about the the, the cars and etc. This is it's just an example. It's like a metaphor uh, for that. Now. You, you mentioned like an incredible increase in, in workforce from a small team that worked together, um, like probably in one room, right? Or in one factory hall to now 600 people. You guys are in the process of bringing on more people, um, scaling and a culture, uh, scaling agility within your organization. How do you envision 2023 uh, or possibly 24 with that kind of growth? 
how do you how do you envision keeping that culture? Um, any any thoughts? Or you just let that organically happen? Uh, bits of both. I think it, it organic, organically grows, but you need to maintain the culture uh, and adding a lot of people that didn't start from the beginning. That yeah, that they they don't know the culture from by heart. Um, but in order to to constantly iterate, eh, so eh, in the agile mindset, um, uh, maybe one thing that that's always, on on Agile Kada, eh, where where you, where you come from as well, eh, you have you have your mission and your goal in, in mind. Eh, so if that's your your first thing or your second thing that you look at, that's our mission. So our mission would be in 2035 that the world would drive on solar energy, a light year in the distance. So a light year, this is just nine dot four six trillion kilometers. So yeah. if that that's a mission that we that we that we iterate towards it. In order to bring that team up and running constantly, we, we introduced uh, the, the lab, uh, planning incremental, so the PI event, we call it the lab. And a lab is like a lab on the circuit. So you drive a lab in the Formula One car or uh, in the NASCAR or whatever that you that you like to, to look at. Yeah. And we call it the light chair and alignment planning event. So every three months, we had had these had a company wide and we had it last week. A company-wide event where we where we get all the departments, all the different projects together in order to to align this this planning, and it it comes with a with a cycle in that sense. And and you mentioned just earlier about Joe Justice. So last year October in 2021, uh, we did the first event with supported by a company in the Netherlands, and they invited Joe to our stage uh, where we were in, in Utrecht here in the, in the Netherlands. And Joe came to us and yeah, he, he did a key, his keynote about Wikispeed. It was really interesting to see how that would reflect on how he did Wikispeed, but also the things that we are doing. So right. it was a really good takeaway for me, for my, my colleagues, for the teams, what, mm -hmm. how, how, what can we learn from this and how can we go forward? Because mm -hmm. we, we are already and we're already agile. And now we need to continue that. So that that's a difficulty when getting a lot of people in there that come from a companies that work waterfall. How yeah. could we we get them in on board constantly? Yeah. How could we train and 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 um, get people into the mindset of light year, so to say? And and we also have in our yeah sorry in a short period of time, right? Because you're growing yeah. so fast, right? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, monthly. 30, 40 people uh, uh, start uh, freshly uh, and we, we, we kickstart them in the first day. Uh, in, the, in the last couple of months and last year, we have, we, uh, we have developed also uh, training programs in order to get people as fast as possible. And that's also a constant development and trial and error of what works, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Getting people together first and get them started from day one, have that tools ready that they, that they can start and also bring them into as fast as possible up to speed in, in the way how we work. Right. And that's a, I think that I find it a challenge also for, for now and for next year, if we, if we outgrow ourselves again and uh, get, get everybody mm -hmm. um, with the nose in the right direction, if we say there. Yeah. Well, you're the, uh, yeah, you're the VP of engineering um, and uh, that the company is growing very fast, how important or how unimportant uh, is hierarchy within your organization? Is this a flat company or how do you, um, you know, this is why I'm highlighting your title here, right? It's like, how do, how do I envision an org chart at, um, at Lightyear? And what does that mean for innovation, ideas and from employees? How does this all work? Good one. Um, we, we try to be as flat as possible. Uh, and we as Dutch, uh, we are quite direct and uh, we're quite open as, a, as, as communicative. Even everybody can talk to the CEO in our, uh, uh, in our company. Uh, so we made the organization as flat as possible. We have open door policy. Um, so I'm direct in, in, as VP engineering as part of a technology circle. And we are organized in circles uh, like a technology circle, like a marketing and, a, and sales circle. Uh, people in the uh, processor circle and some others and not that, that these circles are as a different circles around the products. So sort of how we, we, we say it. Mm -hmm. And this is a, yeah, a flat organization. Yes, we are growing. We need some kind of hierarchy to at least uh, get people uh, rolling, but we, we try to get uh, the, to 
to stay to the values and eh? people first is one of the values be transparent is and be mm -hmm. bold are come up some, some of the statements that we take in order that also the, uh, the, the, all the people are being promoters in the MPS goal that we we keep them together that we celebrate small successes right. um, and that also my door is open to anybody that uh, that's in the company yeah. uh, I all, always every month introduce myself to everybody personally that joins the company mm. uh, in order to to invite them as well to come to me yeah. if there's something that I can help them with or uh, that, that they don't know uh, it, open yeah, doors. That's, yeah open doors Open doors as one, uh, but also the teams, the products that they work together as uh, autonomous teams that they get the boundaries to decide themselves. They get the budget. They have at least their boundaries to work in and let them uh, trial and do fast. Mm -hmm. if, if a change, if they want to change something in that team, uh, in my opinion, they, they are allowed to do it. If it's, if it's irreversible, then maybe you should think about it, but it's, and if not, uh, I mean, then so if you can change back the change that you make, fine, go for it. Yeah. And see if it works better. Yeah. If, if there's a big investment needed, then yeah, have a chat, see if you have budget, and then we, we go for it as well yeah. or not. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's important to keep that spirit of uh, of innovation. Now, I want to from a scrum from a scrum or agile's perspective, however you want to see that, or Kata's perspective, right? Um, one thing that you did say was the the term lab, right? Um, and uh, you did bring in your own language into this, which I really like, right? Because um, it's it's correlated, it's Formula One. You're doing labs, right? Um, how how important is that for for the agile culture that you guys are tweaking uh, these things a little bit to to the like your uh, style of working, uh, maybe? Or was that something that was done in the beginning, or is that something that was introduced? Do you have more of those examples? Yeah. So we started actually this last year with the growth, at least to come come better together and to keep it flat organization. So come with your planning incrementals. So at that point, we uh, uh, we hired some need some agile transformation leads, some experts that would help us further to to professionalize our organization mm -hmm. and professionalize the agile mindset. So our full software team development uh, are running this show as software. From the, from the origin already thinks differently, or no, not differently, but works in more agile in that sense. So not, we're not uh, trying to split it up. We're also bringing this more in, a, in the mechanical development where you have in some areas to do with, with nature and laws of nature to, to get something done, to make something, but still you can have that mindset there as well and mm -hmm. learn and go fast, uh, do more virtual, reality do more virtual uh, simulation to fail fast as well mm -hmm. you do that in that sense and make less prototypes in the end and i think that will be learning for for the future um other things in that sense is 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 trying to build prototypes what i just mentioned to start just start driving on a on a on a lap on a circuit somewhere closed off that uh, without public of course it can be safe <laughs> but uh <laughs> In order to see if your car drives, if the, we have made our own in-wheel motors, uh, mm -hmm. because efficiency is key again, mm -hmm. where we put the, the electric motors not inside the car, not on board, but inside the rims. So we made it ultra efficient. We searched the market for those kind of components, and we couldn't find them because all cars are made for performance and not for efficiency. Mm -hmm. So we did there the trialing ourselves. So after. Three generations now, uh, we came to the one that's going into the production that, that is bringing the efficiency that we need. Right. Yeah. And that's also, so firstly, we'd say, okay, what can we do ourselves? Or what should we buy? Uh, and Or buy in or outsource in that sense. But in some areas it says, so we, we thought we, we would outsource a component, but we managed or we couldn't find actually a, a component that would work for us that doesn't fit our mission, doesn't fit our goal in that sense. Mm -hmm. So we started ourselves making it. And everybody said, yeah, you shouldn't do that. But we managed it. So we uh, mm -hmm. we, we nailed it. This is awesome. Yeah. And I mean, you, you know, once you have that in your DNA as a culture, you in your company, you you will continue with this for all these other models as well. So this is a this is a wonderful story. 
I wanted to share with the listeners of Agile FM uh, because not only about the product, not only because of you know the uh, sustainability aspect of it that is so important or will be even more important in the coming years. You're addressing a very important uh, problem uh, on, for this planet, uh, but also in the context of Agile FM, this is, there's a great, great Agile story here. How you guys are growing a company from you know a small prototype, winning a race to now putting cars on the road, and possibly even more uh, in the near future. So this is um, this is really uh, amazing news. The bad news uh, for, for everybody in, in Florida, in the Sunshine State, is that the cars are not available in the United States yet. <laughs> that might take nope. a little bit longer. But I think the great part is that if the cars are actually running in the Netherlands, where there, I heard there is the occasional rain and cloud um, in the Netherlands, uh, if it works there, it will work everywhere. So uh, that, is, that is the wonderful uh, story here. So thank you for sharing your story with the listeners um, and um, good luck with uh, the launches and, and, uh, and everything that's coming up. Um, thanks, Willem. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Agile FM, the radio for the Agile community. I'm your host, Show Krebs. If you're interested in more programming and additional podcasts, please go to www.agile.fm. Talk to you soon.